Hello. This video is going to look at the character of Gerald Croft from J.B. Priestley's The Inspector Calls. We're going to look at some of the things Gerald says, things he does that reveal the kind of man he is. Now, on a symbolic level, Gerald represents the ruling class or the bourgeoisie, two terms that at GCSE you can kind of use interchangeably. And Priestley's at pains to point out, through characters like Gerald, that the ruling class are morally flawed. This is a social tier that damages the poor, the proletariat, through its heartless pursuit of huge profits. Uh, Mr Taylor, are those lines on your forehead lobotomy scars? How can two piddly words that Gerald says after Miss Berlin's been yammering on about business, how can two piddling words give us an insight into Gerald's character? Well, keep your wig clips in and I'll tell you, because what Gerald is showing here is he agrees with Mr Berlin's aggressively capitalist views, that blind pursuit of profit above all other considerations, including employee welfare. Mr Berlin talks of lower costs. How do you lower costs? You drive your workers' wages into the ground, regardless of the misery that's going to heap on your em employees' heads. In a sense, Mr Berlin and Gerald here are business blood brothers, sharing the same exclusive focus on money above all else including staff welfare. Here, here, says Gerald, back in his prospective father-in-law and their toxic ideas to the hilt. Next up we're looking not at a quotation but an action. Words and deeds of course helping to shape a character. In Act 2 we learn that Gerald had an affair with Eva slash Daisy all the while he was going out with Sheila. Naughty, naughty. And perhaps Priestley hints at this this adulterous streak to Gerald's nature in the stage directions at the start. I think he says that Gerald is a man about town and that's a phrase, man about town, that can have a connotation of womanising. Anyway, what's telling or significant about this affair that Gerald has is that if you're going to be all moral or biblical about it, Gerald can be accused of committing the sin of lust. And you'll notice in this play, all of the Burlings Priestley crafts it so that all of the Burlings commit at least one biblical sin towards Eva. You've got uh, Mr Burlings' greed, Sheila's jealousy, perhaps Mrs Burlings' pride. Why do you do this? Well, Priestley, as you know, has a socialist objective in this play. He's trying to convert Britain to socialism. One way you do that is by discrediting the existing ruling class or bourgeoisie, saying that they're immoral, flawed, corrupt and therefore unfit to govern. Surely that helps support Priestley's, Miller, Priestley's socialist ethos. Another criticism that we can level against Gerald is that he's very shallow or superficial. I mean, you hear his views on women. Ye gods, this man is nobody's idea of feminist of the year. What does he say? I hate those hard-eyed, dough-faced women, but Eva was very pretty. A woman's value, we can infer, stems from her physical appearance, according to the stunted values of Gerald Croft. I mean, he says he hates these ugly women. Now, you can counter-argue and say, yeah, but Mr Taylor, he did save Eva from that tubby pervert Alderman Megatee at the bar, you know, when that guy was all over with his sticky fingers. But look at that quotation. Eva was very pretty. He only offered help because she was attractive. If she'd have been ugly, he'd have left her to her fate. Gerald, then, is a cipher or symbol of the ruling class, and he's presented as witheringly superficial because that was a feature of the upper tier of Edwardian society that Priestley sought to attack in the play. Let's have another look at the first half of that quotation because I assure you it's going to allow us to hop a level 9 express train to Winnersville when I explain what's so odd or strange about it. I mean, this is the sort of point that's going to have an examiner out of his chair giving you a stand innovation. Now you can say it's very ironic or odd or jarring when Gerald casts comment on the ugly features of these working class women because, in a way, he helped make them like that. Overworked, underpaid, exploited by the capitalist system so that Gerald grows rich off the profits, these women have aged prematurely. The physical, the psychological stress of their position, with Gerald at the whip hand, don't forget, has eaten away at their youth, vitality and beauty. It's a bit like in the novel Frankenstein. Victor Frankenstein creates this monster and he's always honking on about how ugly the monster is. And you want to say to him, newsflash chuckles, 
You made him that way. It's the same deal with Gerald. He helped shape the ugliness of the people he despises. Over the past few slides, I've done nothing but pour scorn and condemnation on the well-quaffed little head of Gerald Croft, negative PR all the way. Having said that, Gerald is arguably the most complex, rounded character in this text. I mean, I've been teaching in spectacles probably longer than you've been alive, and I'm still not 100% sure whether he's a, ultimately a heroic or a villainous figure. Yes, he's an exploiter, he's a capitalist, but he shows genuine remorse at the death of Eva Smith, and even Inspector Gould concedes that he brought genuine joy to Eva's life, and you can't say that about any of those blinking Berlins, can you? So, over the next few slides, a bit like a court of law, we're going to lie on evidence for and against Gerald Croft and see if we can't ultimately, once and for all, determine a moral judgment on the man. Now, I stole this off a top set student a few years back. No doubt she's now making more money than God defending murderers and tax evaders. This is her argument in favour of Joel Croft. Without a doubt, Joel Croft is a noble character, a man whose actions consistently reflect positively upon him. Firstly, he saved Eva, a vulnerable waif from the predatory clutches of Alderman Megatee before furnishing her starving frame with much needed food and drink. When a relationship blossomed between Gerald and Eva, it was the money and accommodation he generously supplied that enabled Eva to stave off the ravages of poverty. A further measure of Gerald's goodness, he gave Eva money to support herself after the relationship broke down. Even Sheila calls him honest but admits to respecting him and the inspector concedes that Joe was the only man to bring happiness to Eva's life. Gerald Croft, Eva's saviour, morality's masterpiece. And here's the counter argument, painting Gerald in a far less rosy light. Gerald Croft is a selfish, sinful specimen of humanity. We're not championing Mr Berlin's capitalist views. He uses his wealth and power to exploit a vulnerable working class girl. Eva Smith, on the edge of starvation and destitution. All the while, engaged to another woman. Paying Eva off like a prostitute once he tires of her, Gerald ends the play as he began. A heartless, exploitative representative of a ruling class dedicated to destroying the poor. He learns nothing from Eva's death and readily reverts to self-interest. Last year, there was a clear causal link between my class reading this book and my class walking away with a stack of level 79s at GCSE. Plenty of level 9s, I might add. No hard sell. This book works, partly I suspect because it demonstrates that articulate, polished style of writing that guarantees you marks. What can I say? It works. It wins. It's out there waiting for you. The final insight into Gerald's character comes from this line of dialogue in Act 3. Everyone's found out Ghoul is a fraud and Gerald is awash with relief. Unlike Eric or Sheila, he doesn't seem to have been changed by his experiences the last 90 minutes. And in fact, he turns, doesn't he, to his ex fiance and he says, everything's all right now, Sheila. It reminds me of something that happened with my daughter when she was a toddler. She was craning away this piece of paper, doing an amazing picture of a, a cow. I think you could damn near lean in and touch its horns. It was that good. She was almost finished. So I ran off to get my partner. Come on, darling, have a look at the uh, work that our clever little daughter's done. I get back. What's my daughter doing? Sitting on the piece of paper, eating the crayon. And I'm like, you were so close. And I feel exactly the same way about Gerald here. You were so close to learning Ghoul's socialist message. You were profoundly affected by Eva's death. And now look at you. Everything's all right now, Sheila. You are happy to go on as before. A heartless capitalist exploiting with no thought to the consequences. Gerald has learned nothing. So we've seen a positive and a negative depiction of this character, Gerald Croft. Some people see him as righteous. Some people see him as a wrong and some somewhere in the middle. What do you think?